What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake, and in today's video, a new player enters the game for Dynex Mining. Congratulations goes out to SRB Miner with their new release, version 2.2.0. They have added Dynex, and it does support AMD, NVIDIA, and Intel. Bear in mind, it does have a 3% dev fee. Uh, but they've also added some additional things like Intel Arc support for Ergo, ETC Hash, ETH Hash, and Ironfish, as well as dual mining on a few of those algorithms also. So a few things to note about this is very important to understand the limitations of your CPU affecting hash rate on the pool. So I found out about this earlier this morning and I've been tinkering with it ever since and I noticed that my hash rate in the miner was not identical to the hash rate on the pool and upon further investigation and a special thanks to Influence or Hawk for helping me out here he provided this particular sheet that will show you the max hash rate based off of your CPU's performance. Now, most of my rigs have the i3-7100, and I'm supposed to get a maximum of 1930. Now, I don't know for certain that it is strictly based off of CPU performance and cores and threads, but it definitely does have a bearing on it. I think there may be some uh, pool congestion also happening. Uh, so if you're not seeing these max hash rates out of your CPU, uh, then just keep in mind that the pools are extremely overrun at the moment with everybody rushing in trying to take advantage of this. So let me go ahead and show you guys the rig here, or rigs, I should say. Because I'm not able to take advantage of all of the hash rate with every GPU, I decided to split the rigs up so that I could get full hash rate on Dynex while simultaneously mining something else. And I'm gonna show you guys how to set that up. So as you can see, we've got four rigs running Dynex and Caspa with the exception of Coruscant, which is an all AMD rig. So we've got a total of 6.278 kilohash on Dynex and 4.83 gigahash on Caspa. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first rig, which is Alderaan. This consists of 63070 TIs. As you can see, the top three are all mining Caspa, and the bottom three are all mining Dynex. So let's go ahead and take a look at the flight sheet real quick. So if we go into the configuration, you're going to select Dynex as your primary coin. Of course, select your wallet and then for your pool you're going to configure and miner and in this case we are using a custom miner we're going to go to setup miner config and i will show you our extra arguments so we have the new installation url for srb miner 2.2.0 dynex solve is our algorithm wallet and worker template our pool as well as the port and then we've got the password set as worker name. And then our extra arguments, we are specifying here that only GPUs 3, 4, 5, and 6 are implemented. Now, the only reason I have 6 listed here, which would be the 7th GPU, is because I do, I do have uh, another rig that has 7 GPUs in it total. And then we've got our core offset, our locked core clock and our locked memory clock settings in here bear in mind this will only take effect on the cards that you have enabled and then we have our algorithm as dynex malop endpoint and then we have disable cpu our worker and then our worker password as well as our wallet you also have to set up your second coin which in this case is caspa and I've got my wallet selected. We've got configure and miner for our pool and we are using LOL miner. And also in LOL miner, we have some extra arguments. So we are including devices zero, one, and two, which would be the first three GPUs in the rig. We also have our memory clock set up as well as our core clock. And I'm relying on the core offset within HiveOS. You could put those 
extra arguments in here also. Now I did put our overclocks in here for Dynex, but those are not needed. Uh, your previous setup miner config will take care of that for you. Uh, I've just been lazy and I didn't delete these out here before recording the video because I didn't want the runtime to show less than a few minutes here. And we'll go ahead and take a look at how long it's been running. So currently been up for one hour and 42 minutes. Now let's take a look at Coruscant, which is all AMD cards. These are all 6600s. As you can see, my load average is extremely high and my CPU temperature is getting pretty warm. A little bit too warm uh, for comfort in my opinion. So I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes, but keep in mind, uh, you want to pay attention to these things here. So as you can see, we're getting about 340 mega hash anywhere from 21 watts in software all the way up to 32 using the following settings. Now I am not running the MOTD command to lower the P memory state. I could drop these wattages down to 15 to 20 watts, but it does cut my hash rate in half. So I'm strictly relying on the overclocks that you see here. Now let's go back and take a look at the next rig. We've got Naboo which consists of 33080s and 33070s. As you can see, the first 3080, the second 3080, and the first 3070 are all mining CASPA, and then the next 3070, a 3080, and another 3070 are all mining Dynex. And the flight sheet that I'm using is identical across the board. I'm using the exact same flight sheet and the exact same overclocks and we'll just go through it so you can see same as before and same as before and I could dial these in a little bit further and get a little bit more efficient but I wanted to get this video out to you guys as quickly as possible and let's go ahead and take a look at the last rig which is Tatooine and this one has two 3060 TIs, a 3070, a 3080 TI, a 3080, a 3070, and another 3070 TI. So you can see the last four are all mining Dynex, and the first three are mining Caspa. Again, notice our load averages are extremely high, but CPU temps are considerably lower uh, because we are mining Caspa instead of Dynex only. Now, when you compare these hash rates to what you're gonna see on the pool, then you're gonna see something pretty similar. Right at this very moment, we're getting five kilohash per second. We've been averaging 6.43 over the last 24 hours, 5.84 over the last six hours, and 5.53 over the last hour. And you can see a couple of rigs on here that I've taken off as I was tinkering around and figuring these things out. Uh, do notice also that the one hour hash rate and the six hour hash rate is not currently visible in this particular part of the screen, but again, you can get that information up here. So, so far today, since about, mm, I'd say maybe around 9 a.m., I think, we have managed to uh, mine about 50 Dynex. And if we compare that to profitability, uh, I went ahead and took this number here, 6.278, and then I had to go through each rig one by one and add up the total wattages specifically on the cards that were mining Dynex. And I've input that into the cash, uh, calculator here in hashrate.no. So we've got our total hash rate, our total wattage in software, and at 13 cents per kilowatt hour, We've got a power cost of $3.63 with a revenue of $12.36 and a profit of $8.73, which is pretty good. I don't know how long this is going to last as people become aware, watch videos like mine. Uh, also, shout out to Serpent X Tech. He has been covering this as well. And if you guys want some more in depth information besides what I'm covering, definitely recommend going over to Serpent X Tech's videos and giving them a watch. But uh, obviously, you know, in software, wattage is going to be slightly different from at the wall. Uh, but I am also not paying 13 cents per kilowatt hour. I do have solar 
and I'm probably somewhere at about seven cents per kilowatt hour. So I'm currently profiting about $10.20 per day, which is pretty awesome. So again, just going back to the CPU constraints, uh, we've been talking on the channel a lot lately about building rigs for proof of useful work, and it looks like I'm already behind the curve, unfortunately. Now, I don't want to rush out and spend a bunch of money on things that are unknown at this point, but again, it really does look like this is where things are going. So if you want to be prepared, uh, maybe time to jump into our Discord channel. We have a proof of useful work channel uh, so that you guys can stay up to date on that conversation and figure out perhaps what equipment is a good buy and what is not. Anyways, that is it for this particular video. Appreciate you guys watching. Do me a favor before you go. Hit that like and hit the subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the next one.